everybody. It's Andrew with Dope CFO. We've got a great show today. I'm super excited for this guest. Um, Aaron Smith is on the show from Denver, Colorado. He is the CEO of the National Cannabis Industry Association, otherwise known as NCIA. And um, if you're in this space, you you probably know Aaron already, as well as this association for sure. It's the largest trade association representing legal cannabis in the U.S., and it's also the only one working to advance the industry on the national level. Um I'm going to let Aaron let you jump in and introduce yourself a little bit. Um, even before that launch in 2010, you were a public advocate for policy reform, um, California-based medical group Safe Access Now, um, and more recently, you're a California state policy director for the Washington, D.C.-based Marijuana Policy Project. I will also note um, you spoke last year at the AICPA. That is our national accounting convention of all CPAs in the U.S. You'll be back speaking this year. Um, so that'll be that was definitely one of the, the hottest um, attended events at, at that. So let me let you jump in with a little more background about yourself and just maybe even give the, the background story of how you got into this industry, because that's that's always um, interesting. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Um, it's great to connect with you here. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, well, I, I, I got involved in cannabis really college, even, even before almost, I, I got, uh, unfortunately arrested for a small amount of marijuana yeah. in 1995. And, um, it, it resulted in a bet, you know, it was a, it was just a possession charge, but resulted in a bad interaction with the police, uh, kind of turned me into an activist right then and there. And I was, you know, 17 years old already only. Um, and then, you know, started working. Uh, I didn't really start working professionally in the space until um, another several, you know, 10 years after that. In 2005, started working uh, for the Marijuana Policy Project and, and, and some various um, issues in California. And we were, you know, this was the early days of the industry in California. I mean, no, nobody was even calling it an industry, but looking back on it, you know, this was right when uh, storefronts were starting to really go up and and people were starting to, to operate cannabis medical cannabis collectives in a you know more professional way and uh, by 2010 my um, the partner who helped helped create NCIA Steve Fox and I really just saw that there was there was a, a void there was no representation for businesses uh, in the in the ecosystem of the marijuana reform movement, and this was at the same time Colorado was starting its industry in Washington and 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 others, and so we started NCIA, and we really just we modeled it after just a standard trade association that pretty much every industry has, like you mentioned, ACPI, uh, AICPA for CPAs, um, and uh, so you know with, with that, the rest is history, and uh, we've grown to. Uh, represent hundreds of businesses in just about every state, certainly every state with, with legal cannabis, but but we, we have businesses in all the states because of ancillary services that we represent. Um, and, and, and we've really come to, in recent years, to focus in on representing the interests of, of what we call Main Street cannabis, independent businesses, the operators who, you know, aren't, uh, you know, not the, necessarily the, the well-heeled operators, that can hire their own lobbyists to, to, to work on their behalf in DC. Um, we work, you know, we work to represent everyone else, the other 90% of the industry. Uh, and, and we're proudly representing them every day. No, that's a, a great background. And definitely at the end, we're going to have this in our show notes as well and let you talk about um, who can join memberships, et cetera. Um, this next question is about, Compliance, tax, accounting hurdles. Um, we know there's different committees, banking, et cetera. What um, are those made out of memberships, and then they kind of lead the charge at the at the federal level? Yeah, we have. Um, well, we have 14 member committees working on all sorts of different areas. Uh, I think I think on, when it comes to compliance and tax issues, our banking and finance committee is really doing the most, um, and that's comprised of you know several members who are very you know engaged on the issue they work to uh, develop best practices white papers um, create content you know that we get out to the membership on kind of how you know how 
people can structure their business and operate their business in, in the best possible way, given the climate. And then on the other side of the, the equation are our government relations team, NCIA. You know, we work on the federal side to try to, you know, improve policies uh, so that, you know, on from a policy perspective, you know, get rid of 280E, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk yeah. about and other things. Um, so that that's kind of our two-pronged approach to it. Well, and, and related to that, um, and yeah, we'll dive in here to kind of 280E, safe banking, et cetera. Um, and this is a good, a good point where, especially as we go eastward, and I kind of call, I kid around when I say the East Coast is everything east of the Rocky Mountains, basically. Um, we've got so much growth. I mean, Texas isn't on board, Florida and New York and Illinois kind of dipping their toes in the water, but but um, we have a long, long way to go to get saturation. And I find many people that jump into cannabis, especially the more east we go, that kind of weren't around it as much as, say, California and Oregonians, um, they just see dollar signs. They're like, oh, this is, it's kind of the gold rush. We, this is easy money. Anyone can make money in cannabis and they don't kind of understand. Um, so a couple things on this one I wanted to ask about kind of what you mentioned a little bit, 280E is obviously a huge reform in safe banking um, around making this a fair playing field because it is very capital intensive industry, but also maybe address where we are. And I, I know you'll hit this at our AICPA conference this year. Where are we in the cycle? We have had a rugged downturn in several states and nationally um, investors aren't putting money in um, and it's just tough times out there. And, and do you see any light at the end of the tunnel as well? Yeah. So, you know, we, we meet, meet those folks too, that are, you know, kind of jumping in thinking this is going to be easy money and that this is anything, but even in the good times, uh, you know, uh, uh, before this recent downturn, this industry has never been uh, a, a place to just cash in and expect to, you know, expect to be easy money. Um, I think anybody who's going to be successful in this industry needs to be in it for the long haul um, is probably here because they care about, something else besides besides making money everybody wants money but there's probably something else th those who are successful they want to change the world they care about helping people with the cannabis plant something else um so so yeah i mean in recent you know the recent you know 18 months last two years have been uh you know significantly challenging for the industry as sales have have gone down post covid um you know we've seen you know the supply chain problems that affect everybody inflation um, and I, I think that the, you know, probably the biggest issue is again, 280E is going to keep rearing its, its uh, head in this conversation is, you know, starting that starting to really, uh, pay its toll on the industry. And that has, you know, dried up, uh, investment capital markets. Um, investors are getting cold feet, I think also because not seeing, uh, Congress get anything done last year. Um, con you know, this was Congress members of Congress, at least, and, and, and in leadership had uh, stated that they had prioritized the Safe Banking Act. Uh, and we had Democrats on both the, the House and the Senate and the White House, yet there was a failure to get that done. And I think that that uh, failure really led to some of the, you know, the, the further downturn and certainly the cold feet of many investors this year. Um, I do, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I think it's going to come from the, it's going to come in the form of federal policy reform. I can't tell you exactly when that will be, but it will likely be a safe banking act or, or possibly a form of rescheduling that you know we we can talk about later too. Um, but there there needs to be some break at the federal level. Uh, we are getting to the point though where we we have the majority support in Congress for at least some of you know some of these kind of incremental fixes, uh, and it's just it's just a matter of getting it over the finish line and this hyper-partisan environment that we're working in. Yeah, it's, we talk about it a lot. It's just in Congress, it's so hard to get anything done. Um, and even when you look at, I always go back to the national numbers of just Republicans, Democrats, independents, you know, what is it? Eight out of 10 of us want medical cannabis. And so that means we should prioritize it at federal and state level. I've read you know, the Safe Banking Act, I thought, you know, I, I remember even last year at AICPA, we thought, oh, pretty likely. And now this year we thought it's likely. And I'm reading stuff now that 
they're having little squabbles again <laughs> on that. I think I think the descheduling or rescheduling might be our best bet eventually. Um, I would love to see that um, just because the um, the whole deal around the medical side of marijuana, that is the simple fact so many of us um, want access to those drugs as well. Um, now talking about the around, let's just talk about the membership a little bit. Are your, so you all have members in all states are, what are the membership that are kind of business owners versus investors and kind of what, how do those different communities support each other? Can people get involved in their, their state or how does that work? Uh, yeah. So what we're a national organization. So we, we represent what, so our members are, are, we have corporate members. So our members are all technically businesses and every, every employee who's a part of that business is, is a, is a member by, by virtue of the, the business becoming a member. So a hundred percent of our uh, membership are, are either cannabis business owners or investors or both. Um, and the, the, we don't have state chapters per se, but we do, you know, we do local events throughout the country that are opportunities for people to meet, you know, meet us in person. Um, but we, you know, we really focus on, those issues that affect all the states, so, you know, like the federal policy issues that affect all the states simultaneously. Uh, so we we welcome uh, anybody, any business of any kind. We have uh, not just, you know, it's not just plant touching businesses, the, the you know, retailers and growers and manufacturers. We have, in fact, the majority of our membership uh, are don't touch the plant, our ancillary products, services, um, really, you know, you name it, any kind of any business that's in the in the cannabis space, uh, it would benefit from membership. And you all also have are you a sizable amount of investors in the the community as well. Um, we're and and if you if you do any information on when those people I, I talked to somebody and they're like you know in the last 30 years when investors would pull out of whatever niche they were in high tech or whatever. Um, they'd be itching to get their capital back to work because interest rates were zero. Well, now investors can take their money off the table and make a pretty decent return <laughs> doing nothing. And so that's, I think that's her, not just cannabis, but high tech and crypto and other things. Um, any thoughts on that on, or any, anything you've heard through the grapevine? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, again, it goes back to the, that this is a long-term play. And I think that, I think just like there have been, some short-term entrepreneurs coming in thinking, you know, we mentioned earlier, that think they're going to cash in investors. I think have some have looked at this as well as a, uh, you know, thinking this was going to be legal and within, you know, matter of two or three years. Uh, and then when, you know, three, five years goes by, it's okay. Well, this is not, the return's not there and, and, and people are getting cold feet. Some are getting cold feet, but there's, there continues to be investors that are playing the long game. Uh, and also those that are, you know, that are doing this because they, you know, are taking a portion of their portfolio and investing in in positive change in the world. Yeah, that's that's great info, and we'd love to see because it is there is that trickle down effect that it just affects everybody. The investors pull back, and so like in our community of CFOs around the U.S. and CBAs, lots of their startup clients, particularly again the eastern half of the U.S are struggling to get either debt or equity financing. And when that happens, they aren't hiring the CPAs or the lawyers or the marketers or the lighting companies or whoever. Um, and then if the ancillary companies are hurt, that affects us all, including me, um, on putting more money into NCIA and, <laughs> and other things as well. So it's hopefully that will will turn soon. Um, let me ask, let's, let's do just, check into 280E and Safe Banking Act. Those are really the two biggies. And you've talked a little bit about it and or are there other initiatives, but is it does it just come down to either getting it off schedule one or um, repealing 280E altogether or, or getting cannabis off of it? Yeah, so um, we'll start with Safe Banking Act. Just I'll be brief on that, but Safe Banking Act has been the bill in Congress that has had the most legs so far has the most bipartisan support because it, the public safety issues uh, re related to the, the banking crisis in this industry get the attention of law enforcement. Um, and then probably even more importantly, you have the 
American Bankers Association who want to who want to take take our uh, take our money, right? And uh, so they're lobbying for Safe Banking Act. So there's a real coalition around that. Uh, like you mentioned, we really were disappointed at the end of last year when this didn't get through. Many of us were hopeful it would. Um, we came very, very close. This year, we're in a different situation. We have um, the Senate's moving much more quickly on SAFE than it did last year, much, much more quickly. So this is a good thing. We've already had a hearing. Um, we're, we're, you know, they're, they're still squabbling around some details, uh, but I think we'll get a, a markup, or another hearing and get it out of committee and a vote on the floor this year. I, I, I do feel that that's really achievable. And, and I think we're going to get the 60 votes. Um, the issue with it, though, is, you know, what there there are groups that are trying to make the, the bill better which then, which is a noble cause, but then you turn off certain, some of that, that coalition starts to break apart. So, you know, while, while we support the idea of putting, you know, social justice provisions in the Safe Banking Act, we really should only go so far to ensure that we're going to keep, keep those 60 votes. Otherwise it won't go anywhere and there's, there's no point. Um, and then on the 280E front, this is a much, much harder uh, legislation to move in Congress. Uh, unfortunately, the political will behind changing the tax code for uh, to the advantage of a of a federally illegal industry is not there. Even on the the Democratic side, it's a really challenging getting awareness of this issue out there. Um, in part because the the Joint Committee on Taxation has repeatedly scored 280E as a revenue generator for the industry. Um, or not for the industry, sorry, for the for the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> they do they do a, a yeah. static score where they show, you know, well, because because they're not able to take these deductions, then the we're making a few million dollars more every year on uh in federal taxes. So if we were to cut that, if we were to amend 280E, we would then need to either raise taxes or cut spending elsewhere to balance that. Um we've come back with with a different approach, uh, you know, dynamic scoring that shows that while there could be some limited limited loss to the federal government in the first year or so, over time, over not in a very short order of time, there'll be a significant increase in federal tax revenues through payroll taxes uh, and also eliminating diversion that's or um, evasion tax evasion that's happening. Uh, so, but that that's that argument's continually ongoing. Um, there is a bill, the Small Business Tax Equity Act, uh, that was introduced by Nancy Mace in the House, Congresswoman Mace, a Republican. Um, the bill, you know, it's 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 not going anywhere this year. I, I have to sadly say, but it is it, it it's something that helps raise awareness of this. Um, I think that if I were to place money on how 280E is going to get reformed, it's going to be in one of two ways. That uh, one would be through a comprehensive federal legalization, uh, which would, you know, treat cannabis like alcohol uh, or something like in the, along those lines. And there are several bills that are gaining momentum toward that. Uh, and, and I think we'll see that in the next five years or so. That would resolve 280E. Probably more likely in the short run, um, I think there's a good op there's a good chance that we, uh, so some might remember that in December of last year, President Biden directed um, the FDA and the HH, the uh, Health and Human Services Department, to revisit the scheduling of marijuana uh, and to come back with some recommendations on, you know, a more appropriate schedule for cannabis. Um, a, a lot of a lot of people are talking about Schedule Three. I think that's that's what we're hearing. It would be a logical place to put cannabis. It's currently in Schedule One. Marinol, for example, is a synthetic. THC is in Schedule Three. So while we support descheduling, that's what we support. If if rescheduling is the only option on the table, Schedule Three would be a logical option. And guess what? Schedule Three would get rid of 280E. 280E only applies to Schedule One and Two narcotics. So um, that that's still going to be a long process, though. I don't want you know. I want there there is light at the end of the tunnel. We should have hope, but also realize that that recommendation. Um, we we heard uh, F, FDA uh, made a quote quoted recently somewhere saying it'd be by the end of the year. So that's a good good news. Um, and I certainly think it'll be by the election because this is sort of a political process. But that's the recommendation. And then there's going to be a determination to act on that recommendation. It would require the DEA, uh, you know, it would require the president to order the DEA to reschedule. Then the DEA, DEA 
will go through an administrative rulemaking process, which could take another year. So um, it's still, 280 is still something we're, we're contending with. Uh, and it's important that uh, it's important folks in the in the industry know that when they're getting in and, and that operators have good good CPAs like you that can that can navigate this thing. Well, yeah, and that that's all great info. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, a lot of it is education because around I mean, just like the tax deal, it's so easy to say, well, oh, we get all this 280 tax revenue. But if you really look at it, you know, before cannabis was legal, you know, people weren't filing tax returns at all. And as long as we encourage illegal markets, which the current environment does, because we have state walls. And if, if you know, I talked to a lady yesterday that's shutting, she's been in operation 10 years in Oregon, shutting down because um, she can't make it. And she's like, look, I see my neighbors next door growing weed and selling it to the East Coast. They don't have any taxes. <laughs> um, and you look at the size of that illegal market, which I know probably at least 10x is the legal market. And so if someone yeah, built a schedule of just what all tax dollars they're losing, or even looking at the alcohol industry, um, there's big, big dollars. But part of that, again, it goes back to that education. Um, and then the same thing you said in the Safe Banking Act, like, I totally get it. Yeah, you, you've got an agreement on banking. And then someone wants, well, I agree. I want social justice reform, et cetera. But we may have to take one little block at a time as because every time they try to lump all the reforms into one, it goes nowhere. And so I, I, I hope that doesn't happen this time. Um, now, let me ask, we turn it around to kind of accountants in our, our audience um, who are wanting to get involved on that education, how can we have a hand in creating that sensible reform, including procedures, um, anything we can do, um, either through the AICPA or just in our home states? Yeah, well, we'll engage with the process at, at the at all levels of government. Um, this is, you know, and I tell this to everybody in the industry, but this goes the same with uh, the accounting professionals out there. Um, because, you know, you'd be surprised that people, you know, Elected officials are dealing with a million different, a million different priorities. Whether it be at the city level and they're dealing with, you know, what are we going to do with the trash and the sewer, uh, or if it's at the federal level and they're dealing with, you know, f foreign relations, the war in Ukraine, and gun, gun safety and abortion and all these issues, right? So, um, and it's even those on our side who know this issue more than other elected officials who are who are you know what we call champions. They probably don't know nearly as much about the the regulations around cannabis um, and 280e accounting uh, that you know. I mean, almost certainly anybody in listening to this probably knows more than the average elected official. So it's important to sit down with members of Congress or city, state, whatever level you're working on, and, and just help educate them and, and be a resource to them. Um, and, and rules are being written at all these levels of you know what's a that will affect the industry. Of course, at the state and local level, it's affecting the, the industry is affected immediately by what's happening there. But um, where we work at the federal level, uh, regulations are being, you know, they're being written now. They're being discussed. They're, you know, while we don't have the votes yet in the Senate, uh, at least, and, uh, to get, and probably not the House, but to get legalization um, past the finish line, we will in the next five years. And the conversations now are informing what that will look like. Um, so NCIA, you know, is one way to do that is is uh, the kind of the easiest way to do that is be a member, of course, of NCIA, shameless plug, because we're there every day representing your interests. Um, but also uh, come to our our annual lobby days. Uh, it's something we do we'll do doing next May. We actually help you uh, help our members sit down and meet with members of Congress and and inform them on these issues. And then also locally uh, attend town halls, attend uh, congressional you know fundraisers. Uh, anywhere where elected officials are present, be there and talk to them and and make yourself a resource. Yeah, that's awesome. We we had two um two members go to lobby days. We're a member in NCIA and we're we're trying to expand that this fall as well. But I think that's huge. Everyone on the accounting side, they're always like, oh, how do I meet owners in the industry and get connected? Getting involved in the lobby effort, even in your home state, your town. There's opportunities everywhere, and the lobby days thing is amazing. Is that is that just a certain membership that's open to, or is that open to all members? It's open to any member. Yeah, 
So yeah. that's, um, and then you all had, I know, socials as well, which are really cool to, to meet others. Let me, why don't we kind of wrap up there and we'll go tell us kind of where, where people can find you more information about NCIA as well. And, um, and follow you on, on your social media as well. Yeah, um, we're on uh, LinkedIn is the best, you know, we're on all the socials, but LinkedIn is probably the best place to find NCIA. Uh, and then you can find us at thecannabisindustry.org. Um, I could always be reached at uh, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at thecannabisindustry.org by email. And I'm um, happy to connect with anybody who's interested in learning more, you know, about the work we're doing. Uh, and also the benefits that we, you know, be, beyond the policy work we do, we, uh, you know, we provide a myriad of networking and exposure uh, for our members and happy to to connect with anybody to to learn more about that. Yeah, that's awesome. And I look look forward to seeing you at in August. Um, the fun thing about this movement for accountants or anybody, it is there's just so many good things, whether it's the medicine, the social justice, the criminal reform. Um, it's just it's fun to work in an industry that's actually making a difference. And I always go back to, you know, 10 years. It's just about 10 years, I think, when Colorado legalized. And look where we've come in 10 years. We've come a freaking long way. <laughs> it's yeah. in the conversation in Congress. We've got, I don't know, 40 some odd states legal in some form. Um, I think when we go out another 10 years from right now, I'm, my hunch is we're fully legal. We're very closer to the alcohol industry. Um, and that's the best way to put the illegal markets out of business is just legalize this thing. Um, most of us are older in the U.S. like me, and we don't want to buy things off the street. Um, so super excited. We're going to put all this um, in our show notes to where people can find you as well. Um, definitely thank you for coming on. We may have you back next year. Um, hopefully, hopefully the market, everything, the reform will be moving forward. The capital will be moving forward and, and companies back, back on the upswing again. Thank you. Yeah. Look, uh, look forward to always being, uh, joining you here and I'll be at the, uh, I'll be speaking at the AICPA conference in August. Was it August 16th? August, August, yes. 14th, August 14th in Boston.